Today I'm gonna to share with you the eight top steps that you can take to ensure that you're gonna become a successful real estate agent. Hi, my name is Micah Marie Watt. I'm with eXp Realty, where I've coached and trained thousands of real estate agents all over the globe. And I'm gonna share with you the eight simple steps that I took when I got licensed in October of 2009. As we know, that was in the down market, but I actually look, looking back on, and I definitely look at it as a blessing in disguise. So whether you're a brand new real estate agent, maybe you're not licensed yet, or maybe you got licensed over the last couple of years and you don't know what a normal market looks like, I'm gonna share with you eight simple steps that you can ensure that not only do you hit your goals in 2023, but you crush them. So first off, we're gonna start with number one, which is get your real estate license. I know that it sounds a little bit generic, but that's really the first place that you gotta step, but you wanna make sure that you stick all the way through because I'm gonna give you some great strategies toward the end. But number one, you gotta start with getting your real estate license. Now, now, that's definitely no joke. It's definitely going to take some time, dedication, and an investment on your part, not just a financial of an investment, but also a time investment. And that definitely varies state by state. So I would just do a, sum, a simple Google search, you know, search Oklahoma real estate and see what it's going to take to get licensed in your state because it's definitely going to vary state by state on how many hours that's going to be required. Now, there's definitely, usually for most states, I think there's definitely opportunities to do it both in person and and online so if you've got another job you definitely might be some opportunity that you can do it after hours on the weekends or even online so step number one is start getting your real estate license and sometimes you know it definitely can take some time depending on the amount of hours but also you have to do a background check and things like that that can take some time number two is one of the best things that you can do to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success is to shadow or intern for a local top producer in your market. So this may be a little bit difficult, especially if you're gonna intern because you're not gonna necessarily be making income from that. But some of the best things that you can do is intern or shadow someone that is doing and going exactly where you wanna go. And I know this from firsthand experience. I, back before I got into real estate, I actually have a broadcasting background. So one of the things that I went and did was intern for a local television station for four years at the age of 17 years old. And that's always been one of the best things that I could have done from a foundational standpoint, because it definitely threw me into the industry. I got to see from firsthand witnessing how people operated, you know, looked at the different departments, and number one, to even see if I liked the industry. So that's one of the best things that you can do is to see if you even like the industry, to make sure it's a fit for you, to really understand what it takes to become a top producing real estate agent, and then see those day-to-day -day tasks of what other successful real estate agents are doing. So find a top producer in your area, ask if you can shadow them, definitely lead with value, see if you can intern, see how you can help them, even if that's picking up their dry cleaning or picking up their coffee, whatever it takes, but in exchange, you're gonna be able to see how they operate, and who knows, they may end up hiring you. So definitely making sure that you're in that right vehicle by understanding what it takes to become an entrepreneur and a CEO of your own business. So we've got licensed, we've shadowed some top producers in our area, and then number three is gonna be working your sphere. So you're gonna hear the term thrown around, SOI, sphere of influence. These are gonna be your family, friends, those closest to you. So definitely do a big announcement when you get licensed, but also reach out to everyone that, you know, people that you knew growing up, your friends, people that you graduated with, everyone in your sphere, you know, your kids, teachers, whatever it may be, and reach out to them and let them know that you just got into real estate, you've partnered with a great company, maybe you're on a real estate team or you've partnered with other real estate agents and you would like to be their go-to real estate agent. So definitely reaching out to your SOI, your sphere of influence, and over time, as you listen to some of our other trainings, we talk about your sphere of power, which are gonna be developing those top 10 cheerleaders in your business. When they hear the word real estate, they think of you and they're gonna help you build your business and really paying attention to those top 10 people. So, uh, but we're gonna start with sphere of influence, which is a family, friends, those closest to you. Number four is setting up your day for success. And one of the ways that you can do that 
It's going to sound a little bit cliche, but you know, I think there's a statistic out there that most millionaires, you have a better chance of becoming a millionaire if you start out your day by making your bed. So make your bed, get your house in order, and then get to the grind. So whether you're working from home or working from an office, really protect your time and start your day by prospecting. So we definitely want to start the day with the task that we are not looking forward to because once you do that, if you start your day prospecting for the first hour or two, then you're going to feel like you've conquered the rest of the day. Now, when I talk about prospecting, this can be a couple different things. This could be cold calling. Maybe you're calling on for sale by owners or expireds or maybe you're calling on your sphere, but this can also be mean prospecting by being belly to belly, going out and meeting people, meeting new business owners, and just being in front of people. So prospecting doesn't always mean that you're just sitting down for two hours a day and cold calling, but it means that you're out proactively reaching out to people and letting them know that you're in real estate. So I don't know any top producer that is not spending at least one hour or two hours a day in just uninterrupted, undistracted prospecting activities. And so when we think about it, which is gonna lead me next to my next point of advertising and marketing, marketing and branding are great, but they're almost like throwing something at the wall and hoping that it sticks, where prospecting is where you control the outcome. So you can only control the outcome by really setting up your day for success and then try to push all your appointments later on the afternoon. So number five is gonna be advertising and personal branding. Now you're gonna have to spend some money to make some money. This is no different if you were gonna go open up a store at your local mall and you needed to set it up, have some advertising, have signage, let everybody know that you're open and then buy some inventory. It's no different in the real estate space. You're definitely gonna need a cushion to be able to potentially buy some leads. You know, maybe one of the best things that you can do is go to your local coffee shop and throw 50 or $100, whatever you can do at the cashier and sit down, you know, near the cashier and just say, hey, the next 10 coffees are on me and have your logo on your laptop and sit there and work from the coffee shop for the day. So some really simple ways that you can lead generate some pretty low cost leads. It doesn't need to be thousands of dollars going right out, right out the gate, but you're definitely going to have to invest in your business and understand that you have to treat it as a business. And then number six is your operational part of the day. So this is gonna be about midday. This is when you do your admin work. Now, later on, we're gonna talk about leverage and delegation when you get to the point where you can leverage and delegate, maybe hiring an assistant or creating a team or hiring a transaction coordinator or what that looks like. But in the beginning, you're probably gonna be doing some of that admin work yourself. So operational things, activities that are not necessarily your income producing activities. So answering emails, returning phone calls, doing paperwork, things like that. So that's going to be the middle of your day. And then the last part of your day is hopefully setting appointments and going out and showing home. So that leads me to number seven is you always have to be working on your plan. And plan stands for prospect, lead generate, setting appointments, and then of course, hopefully negotiating contracts. So if you break your day in that aspect, so prospect, lead generate, setting appointments, and negotiating contracts, then I promise you, you're setting up your day for success. These are the only four things that you need to focus on as a real estate agent. And then last but not least, number eight is follow-up. We know that the fortune is in the follow-up, but unfortunately, this is where so many real estate agents fail, is really the follow-up and the follow-through. I can't tell you how many real estate agents that I call back and their voicemail is full, or they don't return the phone call, or they don't return the text message, that's one of the worst things that you can do. So nobody's ever too busy to follow up and follow through. We all have the same 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Some of us just manage our time better than others. So really understand that you can generate as many leads as possible, but if you're not following up and following through with those leads, then you might as well be throwing them in the trash. And if you bought those leads or purchased those leads, then that's just money that's going away. So you've got to look on your return on investment and your return on time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and like and subscribe as we're dropping new content every single week. And if you'd more, like more contact like this, content like this, we're actually dropping a new ebook this month that you can go ahead and comment below and we'd be happy to send you a free copy. Thanks for watching.